Well, good after, brethren. Happy Sabbath to you all. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, it begins by mentioning the elementary principles of Christ. It also mentions they are directed toward those who are enlightened. In other words, believers, those who believe, those who know, those who understand what is going on. They also, these verses are also uh, referencing the heavenly gift and the good word of God and the powers of the ages to come. In other words, that's what the verses actually tell us. This is definitely not talking about fringe areas. This is talking about some, to put it in the vernacular, some real heavy-duty major stuff. These topics are the foundation of our way of life as believers. They are the trunk of the tree. So I think it's pretty important. I think it's really interesting that they are there and we here and there can take a look at it and, and learn principles from it. These seven principles listed in Hebrews chapter 6 seem to also correctly define the meaning of the holy days. And they are all in the right order. So you think it's coincidence that these that these verses tell us and that that it's just coincidental that it's re, that they reference the holy days and the answer is I don't think so. So go with me to Hebrews chapter six and we're going to read verses one and two. Hebrews six verse one therefore leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead of, and of eternal judgment. And so there are seven of these principles that are listed here today. Now, I have a question, and I'm not looking for a response. I'm just wanting us to think about it, but ask all of us. Does this sound to you like a maybe a thumbnail sketch of the holy days? It does to me. It does to me. So today in this sermonette, I'd like for us to take a look at one, at one of these phrases with the holy days in mind. So with the Feast of Trumpets less than a week away, I thought that we would look briefly at the principle of dealing with the Feast of Trumpets, tying it in to one of these seven principles, elementary principles of Christ. So when we look at the elementary principle of baptisms, and of the Feast of Trumpets is a very interesting topic. And of course, we I know we understand that the Feast of Trumpets pictures, in our mind, we first and rightly so think about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we also realize that this time is only days prior to Satan being banished, and then only a few days from that, when Jesus sets up his 1,000-year reign and rule over all nations, over all people. And we know the Day of Atonement and then the Feast of Tabernacles and going on into the last great day. So trying to put that as simply as I possibly can, baptism specifically symbolizes our death and resurrection. When we are put into that watery grave of baptism, we are symbolically being buried, as well as washing away our sins. Go with me to 1 
Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. And as for some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Yet, when we were lifted up at this act of baptism, when we were put into this watery grave, grave symbolizing our burial, this being lifted up symbolizes our own resurrection. And, and having done many baptisms over the year, I've actually thought about it. You know, I mean, like this, you know, and go, oh, I'm glad you didn't baptize me if you're thinking these things. But anyway, I've actually put people in and I said, you know what? It is a resurrection because if I don't pull them up, they're dead. <laughs> now, be, and I know I'm going to pull them up. I mean, you know, I know that I'm doing, I know this is symbolic. So here's the, so here's a point to think about. Baptism begins the chain of events, and those chains of event includes the laying on of hands, which is another elementary principle of Christ. That can be covered maybe on another day. So, brethren, being baptized, being buried and raised from the dead, this is going to prepare us in our mind, in our thought, and in our lives, it is going to prepare us for our lifelong journey of eternal life in the kingdom of God. And that is where we're to be focusing our minds and our attention at that time. And therefore, it's going to lead us directly to the Feast of Trumpets, the day the resurrection of life occurs. Notice what we are told in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, we begin. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now let's go up a little earlier, and let's begin reading in verse 35. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Many translations, do they come up? In other words, they're resurrected. Verse 36, you fool. That which you sow is not quickened or made alive, except it die. Now, there's a lot of principles in here, and we're not going through all of this, but because we're limiting to what we're actually focusing on. Verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It, meaning the body, is sown or buried in corruption. It, the body, is raised or resurrected in, in, in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in honor. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Verse 44, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spirit, spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Like I said, a lot of different principles that are actually covered in this one chapter, in these few verses. And it's all centered around talking about baptism. And it's all tied into the Feast of Trumpets. There are many different aspects that we can cover about the Feast of Trumpets. This is one. And so, brother, what we're seeing is, is that at baptism, that spiritual body is our future hope. That spiritual body that we are resurrected with is the reason we live our life today in the way that we do. Because we do this looking forward to being sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. And that starts for us on the Feast of Trumpets.
Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, brother. We love you all.